Hi guys, I'm going to introduce you guys to a new diagram today, and that's the diagram for the labor market. Um, you see it looks just like a supply curve, and that's because it is. In fact, ASL is aggregate supply of labor. Um, our axes, we've got quantity and average wage level, and what our curve represents is that at higher wages, people are more willing to work. And again, that seems to make a lot of sense. If the wage is a dollar a day, I'm sorry, I'm not going to go work for a dollar a day. I'm better served, you know, having the government pay for my food. Um, I'm better served going out and hunting lions on my own. But for a dollar a day, I cannot work. I can't pay for my bills. Essentially, I can't survive. So, as wages go up, now I become more and more willing to, to seek employment. Remember, when we talk about work, we're talking about employment at a firm, at a business. Okay, me going out and hunting a lion is not represented on the ASL curve. It would be another curve where I get tangled. Anyhow, um, so that's our first step. Okay, our second step is we're going to bring in another supply curve. And our immediate observations about this is that it's rather steep and that it's to the right of our ASL curve. So, this is going to be what we call TLF, and this is total labor force. So, what this represents is the total amount of people in our economy that are willing to work and are actively seeking work uh, at all prices, of course. Now, you notice that it is positively sloped. That is, as wage goes up, we do see more people uh, willing to work and actively seeking work. Well, again, we can think of the example I already gave. Um, you know, if I'm not actively seeking work, well, then I'm not really part of the labor force. That's part of the definition that we already set out. Uh, college students, uh, people who stay at home, uh, you know, work at home, or I'm sorry, house moms or house dads, um, retired people, all these people are not part of the labor force. But you can imagine if you retire at 60 years old or 65, and all of a sudden wages go way, way up, you might be motivated to go back to work. So that's why we see this positive correlation or this positive slope um, of total labor force. But you see that it's not moving up that much because again, let's face it, if I'm retired, wages would have to go up a whole lot for me to say, okay, well now I'm gonna go back to work for some reason. So if we look at the gap between these, so we see that at wage one, total labor force is there, and at wage two, Again, total labor force increases by a little bit, but not that much. We do notice, however, that the gap between the ASL curve and the TLF curve is going to narrow. And again, what we're representing here is this concept called the natural rate of unemployment that we looked at last year. And again, that's the idea that there's always going to be a certain amount of people who are unemployed. It doesn't matter what the wage is. Some people are going to be frictionally or seasonally or structurally unemployed. But that natural rate of unemployment is going to be smaller at a higher wage than a lower wage. And again, that's easy to think about. If, I'm, if wages are low, if we're down at W1, you know, how motivated am I to really go out and look for work? Um, you know, I look for work and there's not a lot of work available. I look for work and all I can find are low-paying jobs. I'm not going to look that hard. So I'm going to be much more apt to stay on, you know, unemployment benefits or, you know, receive charity from somebody or live with my parents or, or something like that. So that gap's going to be rather large. However, as wages go up, now maybe I, I look with a little bit more um, intensity and I'm going to find a job and, and go ahead and take it. So again, just to recap, we can say that we, we see the NRU as the gap between these two curves in yellow. Okay, lastly, we're going to bring in uh, aggregate demand for labor. So this is ADL. And when we draw this, we're never going to draw this so it touches uh, TLF. We're certainly not going to imply that there's some sort of equilibrium that exists, um, some sort of equilibrium that would exist at a really low price. So never draw it so that it intersects uh, ADL. There's no real relationship between ADL and TLF. So when we draw this, 
how we're going to draw it is we're going to show an equilibrium between ADL and ASL, and that's going to produce an average wage and a certain quantity of labor. And that quantity of labor is QFE. Okay, so we're saying at that equilibrium, at that point, um, labor is fully employed. Okay, now remember, full employment doesn't mean 100% employment. It means that the only other employment is structural or frictional or seasonal. So the rest of the employment can be shown here, again, is the distance between um, QFE and the TLF curve. So that's going to be our quantity of total labor, and the distance between those two is going to be our NRF.